Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. It's been a while since I released a fresh video and it's because I've been very under the weather. Since I came back from Milwaukee, I caught the flu and it's put me down for quite a bit. So this is it, I'm back. Um, I made a hard go to come back. I've been scripting videos this entire time and just preparing for the time when I could <laughs> be on camera again because before today, I was absolutely miserable. So anyway guys, I have a very strong candidate to replace your multimeter. So let's take a look and see what I got for you. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. I was just surfing the internet one day and I seen this message that popped up, I think on Facebook or, or something. I think it was fa Facebook and it said, you might be interested in this product. And I was like, oh hell, okay, let's, let's take a look. This guy right here, the Astro AI. It was a crazy tiny multimeter that just fascinated me. And I thought, holy cow, this could fit in my tool bag Whereas my 289 meter, this guy right here, you can see it does not do such a good job at that. I mean, take a look. Look how big this guy is. So, for contrast, let's leave that there and let's take a look at what you get with the Astro AI multimeter. So, it comes in this very nice kit where the multimeter is strapped on one side and on the other side, you've got a set of actually some pretty decent leads take a look at this they've got the isolation covers and they got really long very very pointy um contacts here so that's some actually some pretty good leads and then it also comes with a thermocouple probe which surprisingly enough this was extremely accurate when compared to my fluke um it was basically spot on the money so let's take a look at some of the stuff we got going on here. And also there's a user manual and a thank you note. It all comes in this tiny little case. I mean, look at the size of this. Look at the size of my smartphone. That's, that's the size of my phone. That's the size of this multimeter. You see that? How awesome is that? This guy, I can fit in my toolkit someplace. This guy here, I only grab when it's a real special occasion, but the problem is, is like often, you know, your, your meter is going to be used for diagnostic purposes, not calibration purposes, 95% of the time. And probably I would say I use my multimeter at least 20 to 30% of the time when I show up on site. So I, I have to tag this guy along quite often, but as I said, we usually only use it for diagnostic purposes not for calibration purposes. So this guy here, uh, my Fluke 289, it also has, oh, let's pull it out. So here's the size of my meter. Here's the leads. And where is the other piece? All right, obviously the 289 does a few other things. Here's my thermocouple probe. I mean, you can see the size difference here and what I'm working with. So let's take a look at this guy. Um, it has a couple buttons on the outside. One of them is a flashlight. One of them's power on, and it says NCV. I'm not really sure what NCV stands for. Near field something, I, I have no idea. Um, and APO, which is auto power off. So naturally this meter will stay on. You hit auto power off, and I think in 10 or 15 minutes it shuts itself off. Um, but by default, it stays on, which is good because this guy, once you remove the case, it has three uh, AAA batteries. So not very difficult. Just one screw in the middle, back cover comes off, and that's your batteries. But it's got a really nice boot. It looks like it's extremely durable. And down here are your meter holes. So that's also very interesting. They're not up on top. They're down below. But it also has here indicator lights 
showing you uh, what should be plugged in for certain tests. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so it boots rather quickly. And for regular meters, you can see it's flashing right here, showing this light and this light should be plugged in. So we're gonna plug in our red and our common. Here, let's spin these guys up. All right, so it does sit nice and flat on a desk. And one of the cool things about this meter is it does auto seek for what you are trying to measure, which means AC, DC, whatever, it's on smart mode and it's looking. Now I know on the screen here, it's showing that the screen is all googly. It's not googly in real life. I promise you that. It looks very crisp, very colorful. Okay, so here it picks up its DC 12.43 volts. see it right there so it picked up on it instantly let's go ahead and pull these isolation covers off and let's try the power strip and let's see so it says that this is a uh, 10,000 count meter it says nine uh, nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine counts so that's pretty interesting the meter is very quick very responsive and it seems to be extremely accurate because I've tested it with my uh, my switch mode power supply and uh, I've tested it with this multimeter here, my Fluke, and it seems to be extremely on point. So let's say I want to pull these guys off and I want to switch over to thermocouple. Put the common and this one. So notice that it goes immediate to continuity mode because obviously it's a shorted circuit. So guys, uh, for this one here, all we gotta do is hit function and we can scroll through the functions. Very simple, I love that red button, front and center, right in the middle of it. I go over to degree centigrade, degree Fahrenheit. The cool thing is it's got both of them on the same screen. It's got degrees Fahrenheit and the small print and large print I've got right here, 33 degrees centigrade, which honestly that's, way better than what I was expecting because often when I do measurements on my fluke I have to do the conversions post factor because uh, you know some refrigerators and freezers and stuff like that they'll be in uh, Fahrenheit or centigrade or whatever so that's uh that's the thermocouple probe very nice very solid in the bottom let's switch back to the, the meter leads so if I want to switch over and let's say do microamps. It switches automatically. It's very smart. It knows where you plugged it in and it converts the meter over automatically. You have a range button. You have a hold button. You have a select button so that you can select uh, different other fields for the subset right here, which is the microprint. You can see I can put in frequency, centigrade, frequency, yada, yada. Um, here, let's put it over in the main so I can switch through those options. Okay, so right now it's in smart mode. It's just flipping back and forth. Now I can pop it over on like this battery. Bam, 1244. Let's see. Let's see what it does with my isolation power strip here. So remember, isolation power strips should be um, to ground. Should be half of the phases on one side, half of the phases on the other. That 43 volts to ground. The other side, we got 34 volts to ground. Across both the prongs, 125, 126 volts. Obviously, you're going to get a varied voltage uh, out of an isolation transformer, especially one that wasn't wired to be an isolation transformer like mine. So, guys, this is the new piece of kit. This is going to go with me on my. Um, this is going to go in my tool bag. So you can see it's got a little flashlight. So if I need to see what I'm doing in a socket or something, I can just pop on the flashlight. Very cool feature set. I really dig this multimeter, uh, even if it didn't have the smart mode and stuff, which I'm really glad it does. Uh, I still would dig the way that they have this. 
since the meter leads come out the bottom, it allows for a nice, clean, flat facing uh, surface. I really dig that. This is a true RMS multimeter. And uh, according to this, it's completely isolated. Of course, it would be um, because it's battery powered. But uh, what a neat little multimeter. And then you just hold the power button, shut it off. And it fits so beautifully back in its kit. Now, you see, I turned the screen face down. And the reason I do that, I wish there were some holes down here so I didn't have to remove it from the kit. Maybe I'll, I'll melt some holes in the case so that my leads will just fit through the case. That would be better. But I'm protecting the screen because I just kind of wind my meter leads up like so and stick them in this pocket. And, you know, the meter leads themselves can be a little bit abrasive on things like a screen. Wow, those are sharp points. I just poked myself. All right. And guys, I am very particular about my thermocouple probes because so many guys just booger up their thermocouples that come with their meter. You can take a look. This, this thermocouple right here has been used for years. And look, it's still in excellent condition because I wind it up every single time I'm done with it. And try not to create stress points like right here where it has the strain relief. You can see mine's never been bent over, which is usually where they break. So I, I do stress to you guys to take care of your supplies every time you pull them out. But take a look at that kit. One little box. Your multimeter fits in there, and this guy is quick, it's accurate, it does auto ranging. It's a beautiful thing, and it's cheap. If I remember, I only paid like 30 or 40 dollars for this guy. It was crazy cheap. I'll, I'll post the, the actual link down below. I hope it's still for sale. But the Astro AI, a fantastic little multimeter. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you at the moment. I'm gonna start working on some of these other videos. I've been planning all week, but because I couldn't talk, I couldn't make them for you. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Thanks for watching, guys.